Rain gardens are a type of site-level stormwater management practice designed to capture and absorb rainwater to reduce stormwater pollution. In this video, we'll show you the steps involved in installing a residential rain garden. At this site, runoff from the roof flows from the gutter, down the driveway, and into the road. By redirecting roof water into a rain garden, we reduce the volume of water as well as the potential pollutants it can carry. This reduces the burden on municipal stormwater infrastructure and pollution into nearby surface waters. It is important to know the type of soil in the area the rain garden will be built. The soil texture plays a role in determining how big the rain garden should be. A soil ribbon test can be used to identify the soil texture. How well the soil drains is an important part of understanding the site and whether it is suitable for a rain garden. A simple perk test can be done to time how quickly the water drains through the soil. Ideally, a 12 inch deep hole should drain completely within 24 hours. If it takes longer than that for the hole to drain, a different location should be considered. An important soil consideration for plants is the depth of the soil. Plants need about six inches of soil material to root and get the nutrients they need to grow into healthy, mature plants. It is also a good idea to identify a location to store and dispose of material excavated from the garden. Once that is done, you can begin by marking out the perimeter of your rain garden with spray paint, flags, or even string. Completely remove the sod within the marked area of your rain garden. If possible, remove the sod in large pieces and reserve it, if needed, for building a berm around the rain garden. Once the sod is removed, it's time to dig to get to your designated rain garden depth, which is different for every garden, but usually around 12 inches. Once you think you're close to the bottom depth, hammer stakes around the perimeter of the garden, starting with the highest edge and working around the garden. With a string at the base of the highest stake, use a string level to mark the height on each stake around the perimeter of the garden. This will be your berm height. Think of the finished rain garden as a bowl. We want the top of the bowl to be the same height all the way around so that it holds water evenly. Berms can be made out of soil, or in this case, the sod that was removed earlier. While building the berm, you should also build the outlet. Building an outlet allows larger storms to safely overflow out of the rain garden and reduces damage to the berm or plants. Once all of your stakes are marked, you can then use the string and level to make sure that the bottom of the rain garden is flat. You can do this by measuring the distance from the bottom of the rain garden to the string. You may find that you need to dig out additional material or rake it out to get rid of high or low spots. Remember, a level bottom helps the water spread out more evenly throughout the rain garden to maximize the surface area of the soil and distribute water to plants. After the bottom of the rain garden has been leveled, it is time to prepare the soil for plants. If most of the topsoil was removed to achieve the correct bottom depth, native soil, compost, and other soil amendments can be added to give at least six inches of depth for plants to bed. Knowing the soil pH, organic content, and nutrient content will help you make decisions on plant selection and soil amendments that may be needed. Now it's time to focus on the inlet and getting water from the downspout and into the garden. For this project, we extended the downspout and buried it in a trench. Being careful to remove the sod, we extend the downspout using corrugated plastic, then use crushed stone and a level to achieve sufficient pitch to drain the pipe into the garden. Once in place, the pipe can be buried and sod replaced. It is a good idea to place a flat stone or crushed stone where the pipe enters the garden. This helps slow the water down as it enters the garden and it prevents erosion at the inlet. It's a good idea to test the inlet to see where the water flows and to make sure no channels form. Now we're ready for plants. We try to use native perennial plants in our rain gardens because they are well suited for the region, will tolerate both cold and hot seasons, and support native wildlife and pollinator populations. Not all plants work in rain gardens though. Rain garden plants need to be tolerant of fluctuating wet and dry conditions. Time and duration of sun exposure, wind, and soil type will help determine which plants to select for a given garden. 
Once the plants are in the ground, a two inch layer of mulch is recommended to help retain moisture and prevent weeds. So there you have it, your finished rain garden. It's a good idea to check it after each storm. Weeding, watering, and replacing mulch will likely be needed in the first year and until the garden is fully established. But with a little care and a little work, you can feel good knowing that you and your rain garden are helping to protect clean water in your community. Additional information on rain gardens and the Soak Up the Rain program can be found on the program's website at soaknh.org.